chair if you go ahead and stand to your feet. We want to welcome those online that will be joining us online. Uh, it's so good to have you guys, to be able to see you guys uh, in person. Right now, can you go ahead and lift your hands? We're just going to begin to tell God things that we're thankful for. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to have the opportunity to come into the house of God with friends and family and be able to worship. Yeah, I may be here with a mask, I may be here socially distanced, but you know what? I don't have to socially distance myself from the presence of God. I don't have to wear a, a mask of, of uh, fears and insecurity in the presence of God. I can be my full self, my total self in His presence. And right now, the word today, I don't, I don't there, there's so many things that, you know, are, are going through the news as it pertains to guidelines of being safe. And we want you guys to follow those. But you know what? I, I want you guys to worship with abandon today. I don't want you to have a second thought uh, when you come into his presence. You guys come in with thanksgiving. Come in with rejoicing. Let's enter into his presence and let's, let's make a sweet sound in Zion today. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for everyone that's here. God, I thank you, God, that you're filling our environment, God, with your presence, Lord God. I thank you that we'll feel you close, that we'll feel you in a deep and intangible way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, for just the ability to lift your name up, to praise you, Lord God. We thank you for freedom in the room today, freedom in the house today in Jesus name we honor you we bless you and everybody said amen you guys excited to be here come on and put your hands together and give God some praise amen hallelujah I don't know what you came in here for today but we about to turn up amen let's worship the Lord let's give him praise come on put those hands together magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together come on nobody like you all Yeah. 
celebrate him, give him the praise. God, you keep doing great things, Lord God. You do impossible things, Lord God. You exceed our understanding with the things that you do, Lord God. Oh God, because we serve you, because you can give a uh, life in dead places, Lord God. You can give life to dead things, Lord God. And we declare today by faith that you can you can uh, create our, our graveyard, the place that, that we feel like there's no life, there's no hope, and you can turn it into a garden, Lord God. You turn our graves into gardens today. We lift you up. Come on, saints, let's lift them up today. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. God, open up our eyes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Graves into gardens. Hallelujah. Come on. I've searched the world.
time that you, you give life in dead places, Lord God. Well, I don't feel like we're through. Come on, I think there's some praise left that you need to give God for keeping your mind, for holding it together for you. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, take me to the bridge. Hallelujah. Yay. You turn morning. Come on. You turn morning. We're never alone, Lord God. You're with us in the fire, Lord God. You're with us in our hurts and disappointments, Lord God. You're with us today. Can you just whisper that to yourself? I feel like you need to reaffirm that in your spirit. He's with me. I don't know if you felt alone. I don't know if you felt forgotten about, but the Lord is with you today. Lift your voice. Come on. He's with me. Hallelujah. Stand with us in the fire, God. I feel you close. I feel you, God. I'm excited to be in your presence, Lord. I'm thankful for the opportunity. Thank you for keeping my life, keeping my mind. There's a grace when the heart is in the fire. Another way when the walls are closed. When I look at the space between where I I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the sea. But should I ever be alive? How I've been set free. There is a cross that bears the You're not in that furnace alone.
was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things that seem and this reckoning. So we can expect your healing, Lord God. You are a deliverer, Lord God. So we can expect your deliverance, Lord God. You are peace, oh God. We expect your peace, Lord God. Oh God, and it may not look like it. It may not feel like it now, Lord God. But we're going to walk in it, Lord God. We're going to walk to it by faith, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for a visitation. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're in our midst, Lord God know about you, but can you just feel the Lord breathing on you today, Lord? And I want you to know if he's breathing on you, if you're feeling him close, he's breathing on your situation, he's moving on your situation, he's moving on your mindset. God, I pray, God, that you continue, God, to just mend those broken places, Lord God, to build up those places that have been torn down, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, we love you, and everyone said amen, and amen, and amen. Fall small groups are back in action, guys. They'll launch September 20th. So if you're interested in hosting a group, send all of your info to groups at nolwoodchurch.net. All groups will be social distance friendly with no more than 10 members per group. So sign up today. What's going on, everybody? Just want to let you know the youth is back in action. We have been meeting for the past couple weeks and it's gone great. If you have someone in middle school to high school age that needs to get plugged in somewhere, send them here. We are looking forward to many more weeks starting to fall off right and looking forward to having a great time at youth. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that Nolwood Kids is starting back Wednesday, September 23rd for Wednesday night services. We're so excited to get back into the groove of things and we can't wait to see everybody. While the times that we live in have been challenging, one thing that has been uh, the same, that's been consistent, our church family has been faithful in the giving of tithes and offerings. We appreciate all that you do for our ministry and missionaries worldwide. If you guys want to give online, you guys can go to knowwhatchurch.net, click on the Give tab. We appreciate you so much. God bless.
Guys, thank you for uh, paying attention to all of that. I know it's a lot of information. We're certainly glad to have you here today. I just want to mention two things really quickly. Um, if you are, are, are interested in volunteering or helping us work in the cafe, uh, there is a sign-up sheet. If you go into the lobby on the right at the info bar, uh, we would love for you to ha have you sign up. We're really excited about finally being able to open the cafe. Uh, so many people have donated and so many people have worked so hard, so we're really looking forward to it. Uh, and the last piece of the puzzle uh, are those who will help us serve. Just a reminder that all profits will go to missions. It will be a 100% uh, missions giving or uh, part of our organization, and we won't take any profit from that. Also, you heard on the video about small groups, just an, another reminder that we'll start next Sunday. So if you're interested in leading one, you can still send the email to groups at uh, Knowwood Church, and there's time. And we're going to do this safe, and we're going to do it right, but we're going to do it. We feel like we need community and that people need to be able to get together, all right? And so this, uh, this morning after the message, I'm going to come back and share a closing announcement, so please don't slip out early. Uh, but would you welcome Pastor Paige as she kicks off our brand new series... All right. Good morning. Wow. I'm so glad to be able to preach this morning to people. Um, it's so nice to look out in the auditorium and see faces. Uh, the last couple of times I had the opportunity to share God's word, uh, it's been to an uh, empty audience. And so it's nice to be able to preach this morning. I want to encourage you, um, even if you don't want to amen me, amen me this morning, because I've missed that. I haven't had that in the last several months. And so if you think I say something good or you like what I say, please amen me, because it's nice to hear from time to time. Uh, but I'm so glad this morning to be able to kick off this series. Before we jump into God's word, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, you are so worthy. God, we just love you so much. And man, it's so nice to be able to come into your presence and to allow all the distractions that are around us just to not distract us when we're in your presence. And I thank you for this word, Lord. This is a word that you have been stirring inside of me for weeks now. And God, I just pray that this word not rest on deaf ears, but God, that your people are open to hear and receive what you have for them today. God, let us not be distracted because the enemy would like nothing more but to distract us from what you want us to hear. So Lord, I speak against distractions this morning, and I pray, God, that we focus into what you have to say. In your name we pray, and everybody said, amen. Man, wasn't it weird to see Pastor Mark up here singing and not behind the keyboard? I walked in, and I was kind of distracted, and when I looked up, I saw Pastor Mark, and he went behind the keyboard. It was so cool, Pastor Mark. Man, that was, I mean, he had so much liberty and freedom this morning, and oh, worship was it was good. I mean, it was good. It's always good, but this morning it was just, it was powerful. It was powerful this morning. And that's what I love about being able to be in God's house is being able to be in his presence and being able to worship. If you're tuning in with us this morning, live stream, thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, we're so glad that you have chosen to tune in with us at Knollwood. And for those of you that are here, if you're a visitor, welcome to Knollwood. I'm Paige, one of the pastors here at Knollwood. We are so, so glad to have you. Uh, as Pastor Joe said a moment ago, I'm kicking off our new series. How many of you guys enjoyed Soul Care? How many of you guys enjoyed that. It was a powerful, amazing series, but today we're kicking off a new series called One Another, One Another. And this series is all about love. This series is all about love. I know that for me personally, and the time that we are living in, we need to love, don't we? If we want to be who God has called us to be, we have to love. If we want to receive all that God has called us to receive, we have to love. If we wanna see people around us, people at work, if we wanna see people in our homes or, or people that we come in contact with day in and day out receive Jesus, we have to first love. God has called every single one of us to love. God, God has called every single one of us to be his hands and to be his feet. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10, it says to love another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. 
This verse says to love one another with brotherly affection and to honor one another. We are to honor our brothers and sisters in Christ because they were formed in the likeness of God just as you and I were formed in the likeness of God. We are to love our brothers and sisters in Christ because God loves them and he has called us to do that. And we are to honor our brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, when we honor people, oftentimes that means we put their needs ahead of our own. Now, we can say, okay, well, I can love somebody, but when you start talking about putting someone else's needs other than my kids' needs ahead of my own, that's when it becomes a little touchy. That's when it becomes a little difficult because we as human beings are selfish. We as human beings are self-seeking in a lot of ways. In this scripture, it says, hey, do, do great things for other people. Honor other people. Put others before yourself at times. Don't always worry about yourself because this is what happens. When we put others ahead of our own wants and our own desires, that's when we begin to see God move. That's when we see God impact people's lives. That's when we begin to see God make a difference. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, it says to love your neighbor as yourself. The reason I feel like it's so difficult for so many of us to love people and to show brotherly affection to others and to honor people is because I feel like many of us struggle with loving ourselves. And how can we be expected to show brotherly love to somebody? How can we be expected to put other, needs, other people's needs ahead of our own when we don't even love ourselves? When we don't even care enough about ourselves, how can we care about others? A few weeks ago, God started to deal with me on this topic. Actually, I was doing a daily devotion a few weeks ago, actually several weeks ago now, and I shared it with Pastor Mark And what God had been birthing and and stirring inside of me, I had no idea that Pastor Joe intended on doing this series. I had no idea that this was where we were going, but I knew that God was speaking to my heart. We would be lying if we didn't say that our country is in a difficult situation right now. We would be lying if we didn't admit that there were things happening that we never would thought would happen in our lifetime. And I don't know about you guys, but I have been seeking God's face a lot. I have been seeking his wisdom and his understanding, and he's been stirring inside of me. Someone said to me when they walked in this morning, they said, man, Paige, you, you kind of underdressed this morning. <laughs> I'm underdressed because I didn't want my outfit to hinder me from preaching the word this morning. If you're a woman, you know sometimes when you put them wedges on and those cute shoes on, it keeps you from really doing what you want to do. Now, I'll be honest, I do have blue jeans on, and if you're a woman, you know that blue jeans are not comfortable. No matter what pair of blue jeans you put on, if it has a button on it, it's not going to be comfortable. But I don't think that Pastor Joe or anybody else wanted me to wear leggings this morning, so we had to put some blue jeans on. But God has been stirring a word inside of me for the last several weeks, and I want to tell you this morning, be aware, listen to what he has to say. Listen to what he has to say to you this morning. I was driving home a few weeks ago in my car, and I was on the interstate. You know, people say all the time not to text and drive because it's dangerous, and I say don't pray and drive because it's even more dangerous. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but most of my encounters with Jesus happen in my car, and I don't know how I get from point A to point B except for by the grace of God because I have no idea where I'm driving or what I'm doing because me and Jesus, we just having a Holy Ghost throwdown. And so that was one of those days where I was just praising and I was worshiping and Jesus, and at this song came on Caleb, and it talks about the Jericho walls falling down. I don't even know the name of the song. It's a new song. Um, And it talks about the Jericho walls coming down. And man, it was just like getting in my spirit. Y'all know I'm talking about those songs that just like get in your spirit and they just get you going. And so it was getting in my spirit. And then I was taught, it started saying something about the Jericho walls come tumbling down. And I was like, Jesus, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that those walls come tumbling down in our nation, that those walls come tumbling down in our country, that those walls come tumbling down in our lives and our families and our homes and our 
churches. And I just started to declare that over our nation and over our people. And as I was declaring that, the Spirit of God just began to rise up inside of me. And he reminded me of the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel are a group of people that I've always found so interesting. I have actually preached on the children of Israel probably more than any other person in the entire Bible because they intrigue me. They intrigue me because I can't understand and fathom why they made the decisions that they made when God did the incredible things that he did in their life. They intrigue me because I don't understand how they could have rejected God time and time again, knowing where he brought them from. And God immediately reminded me of them as I started to pray for those walls to come tumbling down. Because if you know the story, it's Joshua and the children of Israel that defeated Jericho. And God reminded me of them and he said, Paige, the reason that they weren't able to see all that I had for them, the reason they weren't able to see the promises that I had for them is because they didn't know where their identity lied. Because they didn't know who they were. And today there are many of us, myself included, that are listening to my voice, that are sitting in this auditorium, and we don't know who we are in Christ. We don't know where our identity lies. Now, I'm not talking to just the unbelievers. I'm talking to the believers this morning. We don't know where our identity lies. Well, Paige, what does that have to do with loving others? It has everything to do with loving others. Because you see, when we don't know who we are in Christ, when we don't have a firm foundation in who we are in Jesus, how can we love people the way God has called us to love them? The Israelites, they were free from slavery. They were free from captivity. They saw God perform miracle after miracle. They walked through the Red Sea that was parted, and we've heard it preached time and time again. Could you imagine if you were to walk through the Red Sea? I would never turn my back on God. I would never curse God. And these Israelites, they walked across the Red Sea and they got on dry ground and they started to praise. They started to lift up the name of God. They started to dance and sing and make up songs and hymns and play their instruments. You see, many of us, when we get saved and give our life to God, we are so thankful that Jesus saved us. We are so thankful that we're not captive to our sins anymore. We're so thankful that we are free. But how many of you know that the enemy in yourself is powerful and just weeks after getting saved, he creeps into your mind and he reminds you of your past. He reminds you of your failures. And when that you're free for a moment and he holds you captive once again. This is what happened with the Israelites. They were free physically, but mentally they were still captive. Physically, their bodies were not slaves anymore, but mentally they were still held captive. Mentally, they were still slaves. I think that we forget that these Israelites had been slaves their entire life. Some of you this morning, you have been held captive your entire life. And let me tell you today that God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free from captivity. If you are listening this morning, God wants to set you free from captivity. They were slaves their entire life. They were told what they would do. They were told what they would wear. They were told what profession they would have. And for generation and generation, that's what they were told to do. And so for our minds, we think, how could they? How could they not trust God? How could they not see the promises? He promised it to them. Because they weren't able to let go of that slave mentality and be truly free. You see, I believe that many of us are facing the same exact thing, same, same exact thing this morning. We must first realize that our identity today is not in the size of our body. The amount of money we have, the education we have, our past, the color of our skin, the number of friends we have, what political party we represent, the job we have, the kids we have, the sex we are, our failures, our past, our present. We must realize that that is not where our 
identity is. No, your identity is in the one who created you, the one who formed you in your mother's room. That is where your identity is. You see, it's time, church, that we start seeing ourselves through God's eyes and not through our own eyes. There is a way that God looks at you and there is a way that you look at you. And it's time today that we start seeing who we are through our creator's eyes and not who we are through our own eyes. The only person that's holding you back from being all that God has created you to be, and I know many of you are like, it's the devil, it's the devil, it's all the devil. No, it's you. It's not the devil. The word of God says, if the son has set you free, you are free indeed. And if you are a born again believer, you are free indeed. And so if you are not, if you are held captive, it's only because of yourself. It's not because of the enemy, because you are a child of God. He can't hold you captive. He has no power, no dominion over you. You are holding yourselves captive. You see, the Egyptians had no power or dominion over the Israelites anymore once they were free. They couldn't come back and take them and and, and put them in slavery again. They were free, but yet they were captive. Yet just days later, they started to shout and, and say to God, why did you bring us here to die? Why did you bring us here to die? Did you just want to prove something, God? Now, these are the same people that just days before were singing praises to God. How many of us do the same thing? How many of us sing praises to Jesus one day and then the next day things don't go exactly how we want them to go and so we start singing curses to God? What does that have to do with love? Well, when we love others, they need to see who we are in Christ all the time. All the time. Now, the Israelites, if you know this story, you know that they didn't enter the promised land, the promise that God had for them. You see, when we don't know who we are in Christ, we can't receive all the promises that God has for us. But there were a few Israelites who did. And today, we wanna, I want to compare the difference in the children of Israel and a few of those spies that went out to the land of Canaan. These two men in particular were Joshua and Caleb. Now these guys, they went out into the land of Canaan and they scouted the land to see what they needed to do to take this land that God had promised them. And Joshua comes back to Moses and he's like, hey, we got this, Moses. Let me tell you today, you got this. Like, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but you got this. And so Caleb says, and Joshua says, Moses, they're big, but we got this. You see, this is the difference in knowing who you are in Christ and not knowing who you are in Christ. That's the difference. Because you see, Joshua knew they were big. Caleb knew they were big. They knew that they were small. They knew they weren't warriors. They knew they weren't fighters. They knew that they were just slaves. They knew that. But you know what else they knew? They knew who they were in Christ. They saw that if they did the possible, that God would provide the impossible. They knew that if they were to do the possible and just obey God, that God would provide the impossible in their life. And so they go to Moses and they tell him that they can do this because they saw the parting of the Red Sea. They saw the plagues. They saw when they wiped the blood of the lamb on their house and God spared their firstborn children. They saw that and they thought, man, if God can do that, God can do anything. Because they knew that their identity was in God. They didn't allow their past and their failures. They didn't allow the way that they looked or the way that they felt to control them. If we want to love people, if we want to see this world changed, if we want to see our country changed, we have to love ourselves. Because when we love ourselves and when we know who we are in God, the impossible becomes possible. And so you know how this story goes. Moses didn't listen to them. He was like, ah, great guys, but I think we're just going to hang out here for a while. I think we're just going to hold back. 
That's what the enemy wants, church. (laughs) He wants us to hold back. He wants us to hold back, and he doesn't want us to be bold. He doesn't want us to stand and know who we are. He wants us to sit back. Because when we sit back, nothing happens. Change doesn't occur. And so for 40 years, they sat back. For 40 years, they wondered. And there had to have been moments and times when Joshua thought to himself, God, I trust you. I know who I am in you. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that you brought me out of slavery and out of captivity. Why, God? 40 years. Think about that. 40 years. If we have to wait for something for 40 seconds, we get frustrated. Right? Like, I don't know how many of y'all, like, because I do this. I stand in front of the microwave, and I'm just like, okay. And then I'll go like, y'all, is, is it just me? Or when you put something in the microwave for a minute and a half, it feels like it takes three hours. I don't know. Am I the only one? Like, I will go and do like a load of laundry, and I come back, and I'm like, it's still cooking. It was cooking for a minute and a half, and I just did a full load of laundry. Like, that's not possible. We don't want to wait, do we? And for 40 years, they waited. And y'all know how the story goes. They waited 40 years, and, and finally, God takes Moses to the mountain. He's able to see the promised land, but he's not able to enter it because he didn't obey. But that's what we're talking about this morning. And if you know how the story goes, Joshua then becomes the leader. You see, this is what happens. When you know who you are in Christ, The things that he has might not happen immediately. It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. But I'm telling you, the promises that he has for you, if you stand firm and if you are not swayed to the left or to the right or to the front or to the back, but you focus on Jesus and know who you are in Christ, then those promises will happen. Those promises will take place. And Joshua, he stood. He stood firm. Joshua would have never thought that he would have became the leader. You see, the things that God did in Joshua's life, it's not because of who Joshua was. It's because he knew who he was in Christ. We can't do anything on our own ability. The things that I just named, our past, uh, the friends that we have, political party, our failures, our present, the color of our skin, all these things I just named, that's on our own ability. We can't do that on our own ability, on our own past and failures. But through Christ, we can do all things. And so Joshua, he takes over the children of Israel and and he conquers the land of Canaan. Y'all know the story. He conquers that land and he he defeats them. And then Joshua goes on and and he goes to a place called Jericho. Now, at this point, the Israelites had developed quite a reputation. Now, their reputation was one to be feared. Let me tell you, when we know who we are in Christ, our reputation is one to be feared. It's one to be feared by the enemy because he's afraid of us. And he knows that we are forced to be reckoned with. And it's one to be feared because when we know who we are in Christ, people hear who we are in Christ, the enemy flees and strongholds are broken. And so the Israelites, they developed a name for their self. People fear them. So the people of Jericho, they came to Jericho. Now, if you know anything about Jericho, this was a fortified city. These walls were strong. These walls were powerful. These walls were difficult to get through and almost impossible to break into. But they were afraid. The people of Jericho, when they heard that Joshua and the Israelites were coming their way and they heard about everything that had been done, when they heard about all the lands that they conquered, they were afraid. Now now keep in mind, their walls were fortified and yet they were still afraid. That's what happens when the Spirit of God is inside of you. When the Spirit of God is living and well inside of you and you know who you are and nothing is holding you back or distracting you or preventing you from being all that God has called you to be, it doesn't matter how deep those walls are. It doesn't matter how hard it might seem. 
the enemy is afraid. And so they came to Jericho and they started to walk. And the Bible says in Joshua, and I challenge you to go back and read this. The Bible says in Joshua that they started to walk around the walls of Jericho. Now what I find interesting about this is they walked around the walls of Jericho for six days. Six days they walked around the walls of Jericho and they played instruments, but they didn't say a word. They didn't speak. They didn't say, nana, nana, boo, boo, we're going to get you. You know, like they didn't, they didn't taunt the people of Jericho. They didn't tell them, you have no idea what's coming your way. You know, like they didn't do that. Josh was like, hey, keep your mouth shut. Let me tell you, church, we need to learn how to keep our mouth shut. We need to learn how to be quiet. I get that we all have an opinion. I get that we all have certain feelings. I understand, believe me, I have an opinion. We all have an opinion. But sometimes we need to keep our mouth shut. Sometimes we don't need to say what we think or how we feel. And let me tell you today, I am the world's worst at that. Like I'm preaching to the choir this morning. The enemy, (laughs) he knew that I was preaching today. Y'all, it seems like every time I preach, I'm tested and I fail. Every time I fail. Like, I'm just being real today. I fail every time. This week, I walked into an establishment, and I'm not a rule breaker, okay? I'm not. I follow rules. I'm so thankful for our pastor who has said to our staff, if you post things on Facebook, you better be careful because you might be reprimanded because sometimes my flesh says that I want to be a little happy with my fingers. Like, that's just being honest. There have been moments and times when I've been frustrated the last couple of months. I think we all have if we're being honest. Every one of us have. And I've had to have a little talk with Jesus. And I've had to say to Jesus, all right, Jesus, like, I want to do this, but what is it going to do to me? How's it going to affect me? How's it going to affect the people I come in contact with every day that I'm supposed to show the love of Jesus through? And the Holy Spirit quickened me and said, what did I do when they persecuted me? What did I do when they stood and they called me names and they spit on me and they hung me on a cross and they said, hey, if you're the son of God, prove it. Y'all, he could have proved it. But the thing is, is they probably still would have doubted him and accused him of witchcraft or sorcery. But he hung there for you and I, he was quiet. Earlier this week, I walked into an establishment and like I said, I'm not a rule breaker. Please understand, I'm not a rule breaker. But I walked into this establishment and in this establishment, you have to wear your mask for approximately 2.2 seconds, okay? You walk into this establishment, get by the front desk and you can take your mask off which is, is the rule, it's a state mandated rule and it's fine. So I always do that. I keep my mask on, I walk in, I take it off whenever I get past the, the point that I can take it off. Well, this particular day, last week, I was distracted and I had my mask in my hand and I didn't put it on. And I walked by and the person that works there was like, excuse me, ma'am, I need you to put your mask on. Now, this particular person in this establishment, they did not have their mask on either, okay? (laughs) So, now, in saying that, um, Miss Brenda, I just saw you. you. Miss Brenda has her mask on, but it's not really on. It's over her ears. So, they had their mask like Miss Brenda's mask. So, being the godly woman I am, I said, okay, I'm so sorry. Y'all know I didn't do that. I told y'all, sometimes we got to be quiet, So I'm just like, I walk in, I didn't have my mask on, and it was in my hand. It was not intentional, and he didn't have his on. It was on his ears, and I said, okay, that's fine. I'll wear my mask, but you need to put yours on too. (laughs) I know, it's so bad. (laughs) So then he says to me, because like immediately I opened a can of worms, right? So he says to me, well, I have my mask on. And y'all, this was not intentional, I promise. I just started to giggle. (laughs) And I said to him, I said, are you serious? Like, you're serious right now, you're serious. And he was like, yeah, I'm serious. And I said, so you feel like 
You are protecting me from COVID-19. Well, no, I don't. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, okay, so I had to put my mask on. I'm cool with that. I promise I'm cool with that. But if you are going to make me wear my mask, don't you think you should wear your mask too? And if you're telling me you're not protecting me from COVID-19, then you're not protecting me from COVID-19, which means you're not doing it correctly. And he was like, I'm just telling you what my boss told me. So I walk away, I come back, <laughs> and I say, you know what? You are a very rude individual. And then I just go about my business. <laughs> Y'all, preachers are not perfect, okay? <laughs> I said that to say, Sometimes we got to keep our mouth shut. Now, could y'all imagine me walking into that establishment next week and be like, hey, would you like to come to church with me? Right? I'm not going to ever minister to that guy again because I was so rude to him. Now, in my defense, he didn't have his mask on. But I shouldn't have said anything. I should have just kept my mouth shut. My point is, is there's a lot of times in our life when we just need to be quiet, when we just need to keep our mouth shut. Because now, unless I tuck my tail between my legs and humbly apologize to this person, humbly, humbly apologize to this person, my chances of ever telling him about Jesus is out the window because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. We've got to learn how to keep our mouth shut. Now, they marched for six days saying nothing. Now, there's hope. Y'all, there's hope for people like me who don't know how to keep their mouth shut. Just let me finish the story. So for six days, they marched. They didn't say a word at all. Y'all know the story. Day seven, they marched six times. On the seventh time, Joshua said, now. And they began to shout. And they began to declare praises to their God. And they began to worship. And they began to sing. And they began to play instruments. You see, why don't we turn our shouts into praises? Why don't we turn our shouts into lifting up Jesus? When we go on Facebook and Instagram and social media, why don't we start to declare the name of God? Why don't we start to shout praises to Him? Why don't we start to love people instead of... Getting into an argument with somebody, why can't we just say, amen, praise Jesus, I'll put my mask on? Because that's when the walls start come tumbling down. When we learn how to shut our mouth and learn how to speak when we need to speak. My identity is not in my mouth, although sometimes it seems like it is. But my identity is in Jesus, in Him. And when we know who we are in Christ, we don't have to defend ourselves. We don't have to push our agenda because we know who we are in Him. It was when they started to shout and praise Jesus, when they started to shout and praise God that those walls started to come tumbling down. And today I want to say to you that we have walls built up in our lives that we need to come tumbling down. If we want to love the way that God has called us to love, if we want to be who God has called us to be, we have to let those walls come tumbling down. A few years ago, RJ and I, we did a, a race at our, our church that we were at before we came to Nolwood, and we had to climb over a wall. That wall was not good for a short person because I couldn't even get my hands up the wall. So my wonderful husband, you know, just kind of flew over the wall and got on the top of it and grabbed me and pulled me up and I went on the other side of the wall, but I could never have gotten over the wall without him. It was impossible. Today we can minister and we can love people if we have walls up, we can. Even if you have a wall up, you can, but let me tell you, it is so much more difficult. It is so much harder to love people when you have walls up because you have to get over the wall before you can get to the person. You can't get to the person till you get over the wall. But just like the walls of Jericho, when those walls come tumbling down, nothing is preventing you from reaching out your hand and showing the love of Jesus. Today, church, we need to know who we are in Christ. Today, church, we need to love ourselves. I have a video I want you to watch before I close. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. 
Growing up, I had abandonment issues, and this led to trust issues as well as envy issues. Uh, I got I got a chance to you know be a minister of music or lead worship in the early 2000s. I really didn't know what that was. I was about 15 years old. Growing up, we moved around a lot. Uh, went to various schools from the grades of sixth grade to tenth grade. I was age 12 to 15. I went to four different schools. Growing up, uh, come from a family where my mom was a single mom most of my childhood. Uh, trying to raise four kids in the house. Uh, she worked a lot of hours uh, to make ends meet. I never really had a lot of friends that accepted me and so I turned to things of this world to fill the desperate need of trying to be accepted and, and wanted. I turned to drugs, I uh, turned to abusive relationships. I would listen to tapes and CDs and I would emulate what I heard people do. I would go to different churches and I got a chance to experience other amazing worship leaders. And I got into the place where I began to compare my gifts to others and uh, I would feel like I wasn't worthy of the opportunity. I didn't know it then, but as I got older, I soon recognized the issues that I had. And uh, you know, growing up, we didn't have all the things that other kids had. We had to sacrifice a lot and do without a lot of times. But one day God refocused my lens to be able to see myself the way he sees me. And I now understand that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's no need for me to compare myself to anyone else because I am one of a kind. When I found my identity in Christ, that is when I was able to be my true, real self. And because of Christ, I no longer have these issues because He delivered me from them. Man, the Lord taught me through a lot of people growing up that you need to earn anything that you have and you need to respect anything you have. And then you need to give back freely. And uh, man, those lessons along life have have built me into the man of God that he's created me to be. Uh, and I have a child of my own now, and uh, I get to instill those principles in him. And uh, man, I have the opportunity to build a life for my son um, that I, I may not have had the same opportunities uh, growing up. Around the age of 20, God met me in my brokenness, and he filled the void of wanting to be accepted by anything of this world. He gave me the identity in Christ that I have today, the identity that I am whole, that I am loved and accepted and um, worthy of his grace and mercy. I am pure, I am his. if you want to come and play something as I close. <clears throat> um, if you're a visitor with us this morning, those are some of our pastors here at Knollwood. You know, sometimes I think that we feel like the ministers have it all together and life is just great. <laughs> but as you saw there, our pastors have struggled in life knowing who they are in Christ from different circumstances or situations or difficulties they've faced along the way, they've struggled with knowing who they are in Christ. And as I prepared this and had Pastor Mart, which by the way, Pastor Mart, thank you so much. You did a phenomenal job on the video. But as he prepared this, I was watching it and I thought to myself, Pastor Mark dealt with feeling like he was enough and it prevented him from fully being who God had called him to be. And as I watched him this morning lead us in worship, I thought, man, how could he ever doubt who he is? Because he is good, you know, like he is good. And as I watched Tori with those kids every single Sunday, man, she loves our kids. If you don't have kids, like you don't know, but if you have kids, you know. And the difficulties that she faced as a child enabled her to love our kids so fiercely as she does. And Sarah dealt with abandonment issues. Here she is a youth pastor's wife, being able to minister and love girls that are dealing with the same thing that she dealt with as a child. You see, if they didn't find who they were, Caleb, y'all don't see a lot of what Caleb does. He's up in the sound booth this morning because a lot of what he does is behind the scenes. They wouldn't be able to do the things that they do today. They wouldn't be able to touch the lives that they touch every single day if they wouldn't have found their identity in Christ. Were they saved? 
yeah, Mark was raised in church, but yet he still didn't know who he was because he felt like he wasn't enough. And until he was able to fully let that go and fully see his self through the image that God saw him, he was not able to be all that God called him to be. So this morning, wherever you're at, whether you're listening to my voice, whether you're in this auditorium, I want you to know that God has called you for greatness. And if we are to love people the way that God wants us to love people, we have to first love ourselves. We have to first know, know who we are in Him, not in anyone else, but in Him. So I just want you to bow your heads for me all over the room. Even if you're at home, bow your heads for me. And we're going to pray. I just want to ask you a question. Nobody looking around. If you're at home, this is for you too. Nobody looking around. If you struggle this morning with knowing who you are in Christ, just slip up your hand. No one's looking around. If you struggle with knowing your identity, amen, amen, all over the room, all over the room. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We thank you that Matthew says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And God, I just pray for freedom over your children today, God. Whatever it is, God, I don't need to know what it is that's holding them captive, Lord. I just pray, God, for freedom today in the name of Jesus. Will everyone in the room just stand for me? All over the room, just stand for me. Lord, I just pray, God, for freedom right now in the name of Jesus over your children. God, I pray for those today, God, that are struggling with who they are, God, that they let go of the past, God, that they are not held captive to the things that have happened in their life, that they're not held captive to the decisions that they've made, but, God, that they are free and free indeed today, Lord, that they are able to see who they are, just as our pastor shared a few moments ago, Lord, that they are able to see the themselves through your image, God, and not through their own, but God, that they can see who you are, who they are in you, Father. God, I praise you, Jesus. God, I speak freedom today, God. Freedom over the captive today, God. God, let us not feel like we have to always speak and say what we think and how we feel, but God, let us be silent until you are ready for us to speak. God, so that we can love. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus over everyone listening, God, that have walls built up in their life. Right now, God, I speak, God, for those walls to come tumbling down. God, for there not to be holes in the wall, but God, for those walls to come tumbling down in the name of Jesus. Some of you today, you have holes. You have holes in those walls and, and lip, little by little, piece by piece, you're trying to chisel at those walls and make those walls come down. But today, God wants you to know that He wants you to have freedom and complete freedom. Today, He wants those walls to be completely destroyed. God, I speak that today. God, for those walls to be destroyed in your children's lives today so that we can fully be who we have called, you called us to be and love the way you have called us to be. Keep your heads bowed and eyes closed. If there's anyone listening today that doesn't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you'll just raise your hand wherever you're at, anybody in the balcony, down on the floor, if you're listening to me this morning and you don't know Jesus, just pray this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. And today I give my life to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You guys, you guys can remain standing. I'll be brief. Um, if you're watching us online, thank you for being a part of our service this morning. We'd love for you to share it and uh, um, help others get this word out too. Hey guys, this morning before we get out of here, I want to make a quick announcement um, well, two things. Number one, uh, we're not passing around an offering plate, obviously, under the conditions. So you can give by using an envelope in front of your pew or writing a check. Um, as you go out to the right at the info table area, there is a giving box. You can. We're just doing the drop-off. You can just drop it off. Also, you can give online at nowoodchurch.net. And a uh, good piece of news is that in the coming weeks, very, very soon, we'll have text to give available. We're working on finishing up the very last pieces of that right now. Um, and so you'll be able to do that as well. 
but thank you for being faithful in your giving. So one of the jobs that I had uh, when I came to Nola Church was to help this organization, not just pastor church, but help the organization move to uh, a, a better place of organizational health just as the church had grown and shrunk over the years and different things. And, you know, we're a, we're a broad entity with the school and the daycare and all of that. And, uh, you know, some of, those, some of those decisions are fun and easy and some of them are not. Well, today I'm going to tell you one of those that was not. Uh, but in an effort toward um, many different things going toward uh, the evolution of our organization toward health, uh, our financial office at the church is transitioning to a more limited scope. And so I want to make something really, really clear. Um, it's, it's becoming more limited. Okay, that office is going to shift and become a smaller responsibility and it's going to become um, less of, a, of an office. We're transitioning the way we're doing some things. Um, so most everyone here knows the Cornelsons, um, except for the very newest guest among us. Everybody knows. I think Sally has actually worked here longer than Jim. Is that right? Just a little bit. Uh, but Jim has been working at Noah for 20 years. Now he's only 40, so he started when he was 20. He's been working there for 20 years, but at the end of September, the office that Jim has occupied is, tra is the office that's transitioning to a more limited scope, and so Jim will be transitioning out of that office. Now, here's the part that I'm going to ask you to participate with me in. Due to these restrictions we're under, that Pastor Page has mentioned uh, today, we can't have the kind of party we want to have, and I really hate that. So what we're going to do is in two weeks, on the 27th, I think, that Sunday, we're going to have a table set up in the lobby. Now, the church is going to do um, a, a, a severance. We're going to take care of our part as that. But what I would really like for everyone in here to do is to consider doing something in addition to what we're doing and bring a special gift, whether it's a check, whether it's gift cards, whether it's cash, or whether you actually get some type of a gift, but bring it on the 27th and we'll have a drop-off table. Obviously, we'll be cautious and have to make sure that we keep the guidelines necessary, uh, but, we, but we would like for this to be substantially above what we're doing as a church and I can tell you we're doing our very best and it's uh, the very best that we have but we would like for this to be special okay so would you just pray over the next two weeks um, I want to tell you that we're grateful to Jim for the many years and the dedication of service to Knollwood Church a lot of people don't realize that it's not just the church it's the church it was formerly the daycare and the school excuse me the school and the food services um, just to let you know, we've made some changes in our school as well, part of this whole sh organizational change. Um, I don't want to spend time talking about it this morning because I want this to be a moment about Jim. But Sally will remain uh, servicing and leading in her capacity as our KCA director. We've merged the school and the daycare. She is leading uh, both of those organizations. Uh, Miss Paula Wolf is serving on the upper level at the school. But Sally is taking uh, that overall role. That was something that I, I wanted to do. And I know it added a lot to her. She's been so gracious to do that. And so um, she obviously will continue her job there doing that. Uh, we will be introducing to you guys the first Sunday of October. Uh, our new team member that will be taking care of uh, financial in the financial capacity at a, at a in a different role, but over the finances. And so, I just wanted to say to you, please join with me, Angela and I personally, in doing something special if you can in two weeks. All right, let me bless you, Father. In the name of Jesus, bless this your people, as you know how to do. God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I would encourage you as you go out to make sure that Pastor Page sees you with your mask fully up over your nose. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you haven't already, be sure to connect with us on our website and have an amazing week.